Hey, it's me, MLB. I hope you all had enough sleep. I am assuming that you're all dying for this chapter. So here it is, chapter 27 of Rapid Fate Online, titled Crushed. Uh oh. Tamaki just gawked at you as you both sat there awkwardly, not knowing what to say. Um, I know it's kind of a bit awkward source right now, but I just had to say something. It's also a bit unfair of me to ask you to make your mind up about what you want to do, you rambled because I've been watching you. Wait, okay, no, that sounds weird. Like, okay, let me rephrase that. You flubbed, touching your fingertips to your temple and closing your eyes for a second before continuing. I had a feeling that you might have been Butterfly. No, actually, maybe I was hoping it was you. So anyway, I was watching you in game and real life to gather some information, but in doing that, I caught deeper feelings and I know that I like you both in real life and online. You paused, hoping he would say something, but he just blushed and sank down in his seat again covering his mouth and chin with the crook of his arm as it lay resting on the tabletop. So, um, I, I, I like you a lot, Tamaki, both as Tamaki and as Butterfly, you said, looking down at your hands nervously. Okay, I'm going to go now, you added when he didn't say anything in return. I'll be online as usual. You stood quickly and left in a hurry. Tamaki was too shocked to say anything and regretfully let you leave, watching you run to the door and then out down the street. The cool air, afternoon air felt colder as you ran down the street, hot tears pricking at your eyes before cascading down your cheeks. Does he not feel the same way about me now that he knows that it's me? That thought cut your heart like a hot knife and a lump formed in your throat as you ran. This whole thing is screwed. I shouldn't have said anything. You sniffed heavily as your feet pounded the pavement. I'll still go on RFO tonight though, but if he doesn't come then I'll know my answer. You opened your eyes in your apartment in RFO and looked to your left. Butterfly's empty avatar was still asleep beside you and you were holding hands as usual. You squeezed his hand and lay there for a bit, refusing to let go just in case this was the last time you'd ever get to hold it. After about 20 minutes you got up. You were feeling heavier and heavier the longer it was taking for him to come online and eventually you went downstairs to your shop and opened up for the customers. They smiled eagerly as you approached the door and bustled in the minute that you unlocked it. Hey, you greeted flatly, come in. A small group swarmed your store as you stepped aside and you watched them all mill around before sighing and putting the sign out the front and setting up the display. Hey On, can you help me decide which item would be best for me? One customer asked excitedly. Yeah, okay, he replied in a dull voice as you dragged yourself back inside the shop. You okay? The customer asked noticing that you weren't as chipper as usual. You seem kind of flat. Yeah, today is just... sucks balls, let's be honest. You sighed dejectedly as you stared down at the floor. Uh, sorry, the customer said. I'm sorry today's been bad. That's fine. I'll just go die in a hole after I'm done here, he replied. Uh, okay, go have fun with that, the customer replied. For now though, I know it's a bad time and all, but can you help me? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. What was it you needed help with again? For the rest of the time in RFO, you spent it trying not to cry as you helped people and interspersed that with looking at the stairs that led to your apartment, hoping that Butterfly would come down and tell you that he still liked you back and that he wanted to date you in RFO and in real life. But unfortunately, it was looking like you weren't going to be that lucky. You logged out early that night. Butterfly's avatar hadn't moved from where you'd left it and you felt like it wouldn't be right for you to lie down next to him on the bed again, so you sat on the couch to log out. I swear to God, if I log back in tomorrow and my stupid ass avatar has fallen face first on the ground with its ass in the air, I'm going to scream, but right now, I do not give a damn. Once logged out, you rolled over in bed and put the Nerve Gear headset on the table beside you. Well, all those fun times are over now, I guess. You sighed heavily, before crying yourself to sleep. Thankfully, because the gang orca test and the whole Tamaki butterfly thing had happened on Friday, you had the whole weekend to alternate between crying and eating food. You had locked back into RFO each day over the weekend, but butterfly hadn't been on at all. This made you really sad. Monday came around all too quickly, and your anxiety skyrocketed as you entered the classroom. Tamaki was there in his usual seat, and your heart skipped a beat as your eyes met his. He blushed and quickly looked away at the wall, and you looked down and hastily walked to your chair before sitting down and staring at your desk. You hesitated to look in his direction, and he did the same as well, his nervous eyes meeting yours once again before you both quickly looked away. Why is he looking at me? You thought as you glanced over at him again. 
All throughout class you caught him sneaking peeks at you, and because he was in the row in front of you and to your right, any time he moved it would catch your eye, and you counted a good twelve times in that morning class that he had tried to look at you. I asked this question before, but I'm ask it again. Why is the shy bean looking at me? You thought. During lunchtime, you and your bestie sat at the table by yourselves, but you just so happened to be sitting in a position where, if you looked over your best friend's shoulder, you had a clear view of Tamaki, and it appeared that he had discovered the same thing as well. Yo, Looney Tune, are you listening to me? Your bestie shot jealously. You've been looking over my shoulder all lunch. Who is it? I, I have. No, no, I haven't. Sorry. No, it's nothing, you replied, flip-flopping between apologizing and denying it. You have a boyfriend. Who are you undressing with your eyes? She asked accusingly. I'm not undressing anyone with my eyes. Okay, it's Tamaki. I can't stop thinking about him. I'm going insane, you wailed. Your bestie gasped. What about your boyfriend? Uh, okay. I have some serious explaining to do, you said with a sigh. Is she going to admit it? Stay tuned for chapter 28 coming tomorrow.